Hi ninjas, how are you guys doing? It's your girl or I'm Nichwajaru aka Miss Fear for Colouring Bag for all entertainment. If it's the first time joining me or most of the welcome, please do make sure that you subscribe and obviously hit the bell. I absolutely love you and do not forget follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Is it boldly or oh, me? Now my ninjas, before we get into this video, I do want to actually just tell you guys, I feel like this is the first time that I'm actually gonna be saying it in a video that guys on the 3rd of June we're gonna be having our first month class now the location is going to be in Gauteng um it is going to be exclusive to the people that are obviously going to come but it is in Gauteng um and so yeah uh with the class I obviously just want to show you guys like you know how to um create a channel how to film how to um beat the algorithm how to get subscribers um like just everything how to run a channel that can be able to sustain you long term and obviously we're gonna talk about money honey and how to make more money like on youtube because i do see that sometimes just a few mistakes that can actually differentiate you from making a certain amount and entering a certain tax bracket so yeah i'm sure that i'm gonna put um the 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 the, the post that's gonna be somewhere here make sure that you do take the um details and then obviously there's still more stuff that you guys are going to get for everyone that actually comes everyone is gonna get a free shout out and i am going to um create a whatsapp group that is going to be active for three months just so that you know as you're going and as you're growing in this journey um we can still be able to communicate my main goal is honestly to make sure um that you know obviously if youtube is something that you want to do like have the tools that you need and then obviously from there um you can take it um yes so anyway let's go ahead and get into this chain day today we're going to talk about table besta and i feel like this is one take that i've not seen a lot of people actually talk about um and i feel like at this point um one can be easily misunderstood um and then start being called like a rape apologist or a murderer apologist i don't know but i do want to go ahead and start off by saying that this video is not excusing anything that tabo besta has done um uh everything that he did you know the rapes the the murder everything is just evil you know and he deserves to be in jail however this video let me not say however like that's a full stop on its own okay what he did is completely unacceptable he clearly needs to be um you know in a facility and not out here with us no more people okay and that goes for all killers as well okay they should be behind bars darling because something definitely is not right however guys i do have to talk about something that kept on coming up and something that i saw and me now starting and looking at it i'm like oh my gosh if we're a society literally do not see this and talk about this as well we're gonna have a lot of trouble besters out there and we're gonna have a lot of our children daughters raped or killed okay so Tabo Besta's mother came out and um, she was basically saying that she actually got sexually assaulted and that's how she fell pregnant with Tabo. Um, for some of you guys that may not know who Tabo is, Tabo was actually on the list of the most wanted in the country um, after he escaped um, from prison um, and he was sentenced there to 50 years um, for rape and murder. So yeah you know he's somebody that is supposed to be behind bars but it just so happens that um there was a fire that broke in his cell and then they claimed that it's him that burnt in there to death can they know guy was actually out um he was spotted with dr nandi Cosentin um at a woolies um and obviously that's when the story basically just spread like wildfire until they actually got them and they tested actually the cops and they found that the cops that burnt beyond recognition were actually not those of Tabo. Now, the other part again that I feel like we should talk about is that Dr. Nandi went to get the cops. From what I hear, the allegations are saying that she was granted and she was able to be given the cops because she said that she was actually his um, wife. 
However, Tabo Bester's mother then went there to say that she had never ever heard of this woman and she wanted her son's corpse. And so that's how this corpse that they were able to do the DNA test on had to now go back before they were cremated. So if those corp that corpse was cremated, there was no way that they would have been able to do or perform a, any DNA um, test. Um, and then maybe high chances are he could have actually just gotten away with it, right? now as I said guys that um, the mother is now saying that she was actually sexually assaulted and um, Tabo best that's how he was conceived um, which obviously I'm very sorry for that I do believe that no woman actually deserves to go through something like that um, Tabo the time that he was being convicted um, when it came to like you know him trying to plead so that they do not give him like you know life in prison which obviously failed 50 years child um so he actually in the statement i saw with some allegations everything i'm saying guys is alleged but um you know he said he spoke about how he was actually raised by his grandmother um who was also a drunkard so i guess maybe the, he had to fend for himself from a young age right so from the allegations that i'm hearing is that um Tabo's mother never registered him with the home affairs um and nobody even knows at this point if that men Tabo Besta even had a birth certificate which I know they issued those um back then they used to issue them in the hospital but you know I, I don't know how it happened maybe he had a birth certificate he just never got an ID I do not know but what they are saying is that his thumbs were never there um you know in the home affairs system so which means that he did not have an ID or anything like that so basically guys these are some of the stuff that I saw here that was stated and this is minister clifford on um twitter that went on to say that this man was never registered with home affairs his name was tommy william kelly his mother registered um at the age of 37 okay now i'm 32 that's five years older than me at the point that he would be registered in the home affairs I don't know how he went through life like how do you go through life he had no id he had no um a driver's license like it's just crazy okay they're saying that he was using an american passport which again at this point i just do not know um how you know and then he, they're saying that his assumed name was tk guana um and then they called him tom mozipe and then tabo besta and so who's this man so for me i do honestly feel like guys this is a conversation that as the community especially black people we need to actually talk about it um the, it's it's absolutely crazy because the gbv in this country is so high it's so high to a point where right now when they talk about statistics if you have looked at it the statistics that they pull up most of the time is of the murders the women that are actually killed they do not talk too much anymore about the statistics of the rapes in this country because at this point a woman is grateful if she was only raped and not killed it's like at least i i left with my life whatever is left of it and that's the most painful part about living in south africa the crime rate is so high that literally our very own minister of police the time that women um were actually raped and many women the women that were there um the way some were gang raped and then there was one girl that was the youngest of all of them that was raped by one man and the minister of police said at least she i think he said she was lucky that she was only raped by one like like as if she should be grateful that it was only one man that's the country that we live in okay and so with this multiple rapes that actually happen guys we have got children young kids that are as young as 12 13 14 that are being raped and these children are at a point where they can be able to conceive some of them are giving birth to children that belong to their rapists some obviously there are women that are you know older they get raped and they're just like i can't report to the police because no justice is going to be done um uh, and at this point i'm not even going to bother myself by going to the hospital because for them to actually do the rape kit and stuff like that due to the fact 
fact that our public facilities when it comes to the health system they are so ran wrongly i have heard of cases where women went to the hospital to actually get their kid you know the rape kit performed and then they were told you need to go and open a case first and most of these children due to the fact even older women due to the fact that there's so much lawlessness in this country they know that even if they know who is the perpetrator if they are to go to the police the police are gonna go arrest that person and then the next thing is that the following day the person is out now that person is just more angered these women are not able to be protected by anybody and so at this point they just fear for their life and that's why i'm saying that we live in such a messed up country that a woman is like thank god that at least he did not kill me and that is like something that is very painful now with all these multiple rapes that are actually happening in this country you guys that happen every single day there are women that actually fall pregnant not every woman is brave enough to say that they're gonna just go and have an abortion some children are actually very scared they keep it hidden up until a point where even if they wanted to have a termination they can no longer legally have a safe termination so the, the facilities obviously just go ahead and say you are gonna have to have um these kids i do think that we also need to actually understand and also look at the fact that tamu besta was doomed before he was even born this is a child that belonged to a woman that clearly did not want him clearly did not plan for him as she has said that she was actually sexually assaulted and you can see that their relationship was so strained because allegedly she's saying that he ran away from home when he was only 16 so she never got to register him that's what she was saying um a child will never just run away from home I have never met a child that just runs away from home and this child is under warm 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 a warm home okay it's rare it happens i'm sure but i just feel like it's very rare you know the child may just become rebellious and whatever but they'll always go back home because the streets are cold but if the child is able to go to the cold streets then trust and believe the home is colder than the streets they'll rather be by the streets than actually be at home so i do not know if that was the time that he then decided to go stay with his grandmother that allegedly was also a drunk um so i doubt that you know she would have taken great care of him which is why now if you think about it his choice of the um illegal stuff that he was going to do he could have gone for anything you guys like tower Vista looks like someone that is told from the stories that you can hear he got arrested from a very young age he was in and out of prison why would he choose to molest not molest because molesting is uh, when the child is underage but like why would he choose to rape um and the murder he did say that he actually didn't plan to kill her um you know it's something that happened was by accident they were fighting i guess maybe he was trying to rape her or something which still he takes full accountability of that because he's the one that actually um killed this lady but what i'm simply saying is that now looking at everything there's a part of me that is like did he choose to be a rapist because when he was growing up you know he saw his mother and how she treated him i'm sure he saw his grandmother and how she treated him and so maybe he developed this hatred and anger towards women in general and so him raping women it made him feel some sort of dominance which is obviously a psychological mind fuckery but at the same time if you just sit down and actually try to understand what is actually going on with this person and you look at the life that they are alleging i feel like you would actually get it like this is why maybe he was doing this and doing that and doing that now that we know that tabo best that this is how we ended up due to this and this how can we then help these children that are already born and they are born to mothers that were sexually assaulted and they know that their mothers don't want them because trust and believe guys a child senses energy more than even us they know these people you know they may be young but they know they can sense it they can feel it when they're not wanted how can we then help these children so that they do not end up like utabo besta how can we get them the help that they actually need that's the part that honestly like i'm thinking about i'm like if we as a country are gonna just say that oh he's just messed up which he is i, I i'm not excusing anything he definitely is a messed up man but 
can we also just normalize to say that let's unnormalize rape again in this country because if you guys remember back then rape was something that was so huge but now it's not we don't treat it as such that's why now you even have celebrities that if they're fighting with their boyfriends or their boyfriends are dumping them they can lie about rape devaluing the actual assault how can we then and normalize it how can we then help the children that are already born into these horrible situations how can we then help these young ones that have unfortunately been raped and now they're pregnant instead of mocking them not even knowing how do you see a 16 year old pregnant and you that's part of your family that's that, that's your cousin that's your sister maybe and you don't want to find out who is the father of this child and if the man that is the father of the child is over the age of 18 like get that nigga arrested that monster i do honestly feel like as a country we have normalized rape so much and unfortunately with that comes a lot and then there's also um you know innocent souls that are born into these horrible situations because even if you know he was staying with his grandmother i mean his grandmother is his mother's mother his father is the one that violated her daughter so the anger that um the mother feels trust and believe the grandmother will also have it because as much as she can say this is my grandson but she knows like how this child was actually brought into this world that an act of violence happened and this happened to my daughter and so you are here it's just i honestly do feel you know there's a part of me that feels for him but there's a huge part of me that also feels for all these young boys especially you know and also young girls that are born into situations as horrible as this because boys you know they may grow up to actually have anger issues which then goes you know we always talk about daddy issues how you know a girl child that does not have a father figure and mostly maybe raised in a way that you know they just felt you know they go and date older men you know and then it's like oh it's daddy issues that's something that we talk about but we don't really talk too much about mommy issues that happens when it comes to boys that have been abused by their mothers they go through life angry at women most of them they go through life angry at women they go through life wanting a sense of dominance they go through life wanting to punish their mothers through the women that they actually get with and it's just absolutely sick because i do personally feel like we can actually help these other children we can take them to therapy um we can make sure that they get the help that they need and maybe let's not normalize having children that were conceived through a violent act that's when i would actually say i would stand for abortion like i do personally feel if you were sexually assaulted and you are not pregnant like if you don't want the child i don't see a reason to keep it because at the end of the day if you decide to say that i'm gonna just birth this child um and you know that you're not gonna give this child love that's when you know a table besta is born that's when a child that's going to end up killing is born. A child that might end up being a terrorist, being a rapist is born. And so honestly, there's a huge part of me that um, is feeling for him. Um, you know, you could actually see that it means they really did not have a good relationship like that because if he managed to escape dr nandi allegedly went there three days after if i'm not mistaken then they would have easily just contacted the mother to say hey please do not interfere even after she interfered um the fact that the cops were still at a place where they could be able to examine them that means that the fight has to have still been ongoing but if they had a good relationship then it means that he would have felt safe to tell his mother yo mom i'm out please stop this so that we can get the cops and then you can get um cremated now obviously i am happy that things did not go the way they were planned um because i do personally feel like 
the once you're not okay you're just not okay until you try get help i don't think that type of best that maybe has tried to get help allegedly there's an audio that came out i played it it's in one of my videos that i uploaded yesterday and he you could just hear that this is somebody that is mentally tormented this is somebody that is not okay and so until he actually gets that rehabilitation i just don't think that he would actually be okay but then i also just feel like us just talking about the horrible acts that he has done but also not looking at his life in general and the things that he might have experienced it's just would also be quite unfair and also i feel like the most important thing is also to say how do we avoid or prevent the next type of besters but anyway please do um comment down below what you guys think do you guys hear what i'm actually saying um because i just feel like you know people are not really paying too much attention to this um children that grow up abused they really honestly portray very different characters um you know we, we have different characters and we're mostly just molded by the life experiences that we have actually um gotten so at this point i honestly do not know you know um but anyway go ahead and comment down below from me i i love you guys stay blessed and yeah i'll see you guys in my next upload bye ninjas